Hey everybody, I've already started thinking about my hanging baskets and my deck rails and my potted plants and my flower beds all for next season. And I always start that process by going through the photos that I took throughout the season because I get a lot of traveling in and I see a lot of really unique displays and kind of plant combinations. And so I thought I'd spend today kind of showing you some of my favorite examples that I spotted over this year. So I'm going to start with this one here. I picked this one not only because it's a very attractive display, but also because they did things a little bit different. So usually when we think of window boxes or deck rail boxes. We picture those either above the railing or at railing heights, but with these they went at ground level and this is a really nice effect for this particular application because that railing really provides a, a nice backdrop for these flowers, really makes them stand out more than if we had them at deck height. And their flower choices are really nice. So the pinkish red flowers, those are wax begonias, likely the surefire variety, and then the yellow flowers, those I think are the Super Cal Premium Yellow Sun. Uh, that's a pet koa, which is closely related to the petunia. And then there's some black sweet potato vine. What's interesting about this location is that it faces east. So these plants only get morning sun and definitely shows you that with these plant choices, as long as they're getting four hours of sun and enough indirect light during the daytime, that it does really well. Now, I do notice that the super cows look maybe a little bit smaller than they normally would. Same thing with that sweet potato vine, but it still looks great. That's a perfect size for that location. So, you know, yeah, if it was twice the size, it would look fantastic, but it looks really good this way. And I like the fact that we've got the dark sweet potato vine because for a a lot of people lime is the only color they think of but it actually comes in like those almost black colors as well as a lot of reds and bronze colors but the other thing that people might not realize is that there's also some variegated varieties and then also the leaf shape can vary tons from variety to variety and its biggest criticism is that you know it's just really vigorous and it becomes this kind of uncontrollable vine but there are other varieties that stay a little bit more compact and they're just more bushy and more of a textural element so that's something to keep in mind and then there's also the varieties that are climbers and those climbers will climb up down and around and here's an example of one of those climbing varieties this is the sweet caroline upside lime you can just see how incredible that's one plant and it just grew up and over it grew out in the front and this is only a portion of the plant. When you're looking from the other side, it looks like we've got a whole nother plant back there, but one plant did all of this. It's just a super vigorous variety. I love this combination though, because that coleus in there is absolutely stunning. It's from the Main Street series, and that's one plant as well. Those can get really nice and big, and the color contrast is fantastic. What's really exciting is that coleus can also take sun or shade, so really versatile plant. Now it's in there with some geranium and verbena. They kind of got overtaken, but you can see that geranium's kind of still trying to peek out. Geraniums can handle a lot more shady conditions than we usually expect. Verbena really does prefer more sun. And just so that you know, on the left-hand side, that flower in the other pot is a nonstop fire begonia. And you can see that one does a mounding and trailing type of thing. And then the vermilionaire cuvia definitely goes up, out, and down, and around. Really beautiful plant as well. Since there are a lot of people who struggle with like that one shady part in the yard, I'm gonna focus in on some plants that are gonna do well in those locations. This one here, we planted up and we were so happy with the results because in it, you're gonna see the flowering plant is the amethyst colored Terenia. And Terenia is really nice because it can usually do really well in the part shade, part sun areas. Some of them do a little better in the shadier spots, some of them do a little better in sunnier spots. So you just kind of check your tags for that. But normally in those part sun, part shade areas, they're, they're do fantastic. Then we have it with the Sidekick Bronze Sweet Potato Vine. That one has consistently done very well in very shady spots for us. And then that Big Leaf Begonia in there is the Griffin Begonia. And that one has such a nice tropical look, those big kind of exotic leaves that just keep get, getting bigger and bigger as season goes on. And then at the top, you can see the Under the Sea Barracuda Coleus. These two are probably the easiest care combinations you can get. So we have those wax begonias in there. I think those are surefires, but dragon wings work. There's a lot of other ones. Those are sun or shade, so those are really versatile. We don't really worry too much about those. And then like on the left, we have it with the pistachio white tradescantia. And that is one that you can't put it in full sun because it will crisp up those leaves, but it can handle, you know, in our area, full shade all the way up to part sun, and that will just keep growing and growing. It's And it's so easy, and these don't need tons of water. They don't need tons of care. Uh, on the other side, we have it with the trailing mizu, and that's more of a succulent type leaf. It does get little red flowers on it, and that one can do full sun, full shade. Again, super easy to grow, really beautiful. Will fill out very, very nicely. 
The only warning I'll give you with wax begonias is that although they're self-cleaning, when they drop their flowers, there's still a good amount of moisture in those petals and they will, you know, kind of stain, like if you have deck or tile or concrete, they kind of can get a little mushy in those spots. They're fine if you have it, you know, out on grass or mulch or soil or something like that. If you have it in one of those places, you're going to be doing maybe a little bit more cleanup than you would if it was just out kind of someplace in the yard somewhere. So just keep that in mind. And in Shady Spots, begonias are a great go-to plant. They always look great. They do well. A lot of the new varieties can take sun or shade, but here we have it with kind of our secret weapon. That white blossom plant is called Euphorbia, and this can absolutely transform a container because it has that nice little shimmering, glittery type flower. The flowers are there all the time, so you don't have to worry about it going in and out of flower, and it just fills in nice between all the other plants and can elevate a lot of your combinations. Now this one has the red dragon wing begonia growing really well going up. At the bottom, the white flower, that's a bacopa. And they say bacopa likes sun, but we put it in very shady spots. It's done extremely well in those conditions. And I actually prefer to put them in places where I know I'm not going to have to water them a lot because bacopa is one plant where if it gets stressed out from not being watered, it just drops all its flowers and then it can take like two weeks before the new flowers emerge. So that's one of its downfalls. And that's next to that wall where they planted that sweet potato vine, which you can see is not only cascading down the wall, but starting to kind of incorporate itself in with the dragon wing begonias. And then if you look farther down the wall, you can see there's some black sweet potato vine, a little bit different variety. It's not one of the big heavy trailing kind. It's kind of one of more of those textural ones. Now this is one that we put together for AJ's berry farm. They have an area that only gets morning sun, so all of these plants do well with minimal sun. And so you can see there is that coleus at the top gives us a really nice blast of color. And then kind of our mid-range flower is going to be the brocade fire night geranium. It's just getting ready to flower in this photo, but look at the beautiful leaves on that one. And then there is the portofino citrix begonia. Love the flowers on that one. We have two trailing plants in there, the fancy filler sunburst and then the creeping jenny. We wanted those in there because they completely covered the pot. I did a little video update of that one. It looks so beautiful where they had it. This was at an antique store and they created just the most perfect little vignette with these plants. In the background they have that beautiful fern but in the foreground that's a caladium along with some variegated plectranthus and plectranthus they're going to tell you is a full sun plant but i'll tell you this it grows very well in the shade it looks fantastic now in this one that planter in the center this one could do really well in lower light situations now the junk disc grass which is up at the top that one you might want to skip if you have a lot of shade because it tends to do a little better in the sun but the coleus that's a sun or shade coleus the impatience can do sun or shade sweet potato vine can usually do you know more of that part sun up to full sun so this one you could put just about anywhere and it's going to do well now the planter next to it has millet and petunia and impatience so that millet and the petunia is going to need a little more sun now, when people come into the greenhouse, a lot of times they're just really taken in by like the flowering petunias and the calabracoas and all these, you know, big blooming showy plants. And then they say, oh, but I've got a shady area and we take them to the shady area. And, you know, if those plants aren't in bloom, a lot of times they just can't picture what they're going to look like. You do have a lot of options for shade. You just have to be OK with switching gears and look at plants that are going to do very well in those situations and realize that sometimes with the shade plants, it just takes them a little longer to really take off. But in the end, they end up looking really, really beautiful. So I put together a list of some of our favorites, but there are others as well. Now, I can't talk about hanging baskets without getting into the topic of petunias because those have become kind of the signature plants for hanging baskets. Those great big balls of color that people see, that's what people come in and ask for. That's what they're expecting from their planters. And the most popular plant for doing that is the Supertunia Vista Petunia. Those are the largest in the Supertunia family, but there are other very large petunias out there that you can consider for this effect. So like the original wave will do that. They tend not to get quite as tall but they do definitely trail down and get really big and then like the tidal wave series also kind of goes up and uh, it gets the height on it and then there's also like uh, color rush is another variety and i know like Serfinia sumo is another one but like the sumo and the tidal wave are really more landscape petunias so they can look a little odd like in a hanging basket if you're going to use those you got to put them in like a big giant container uh, i don't think they look quite as good you know like in a hanging basket so just just keep that in mind uh, 
And to show you what a tidal wave petunia does, I mean, that is absolutely enormous. And you can see its growth habit makes it so that it's able to kind of grow upwards in a way that a lot of petunias can't. So it gets a huge mounding and trailing kind of habit going for it. And if you're going to use these and you're going to put other plants with it, they have to be very, very large. So this papyrus grass, which is like a king tut, that would be able to manage itself in it. That salvia that one is going to be able to manage, but a lot of other plants are going to get completely dwarfed by a tidal wave. And again, tidal waves usually do really well in the landscape and in large, large containers. And just to point out what's in that pot next door, that red flowered one, that canna is absolutely gorgeous. Another nice big plant. The gara gets a nice wispy kind of pink flower. Lantana's in there and portulaca. That's a really good combination for a really hot, sunny spot. It would do very, very well. And let me remind you, you don't have to go with the Super Petunia Vistas or these big giant petunias because there are a lot of very large petunias that get almost to the same size, but you get a lot more choices, a lot more variety, and sometimes they're even easier to manage. And I love showing you this photo here because when you look at it, these are all different types of petunias and you can see how much variety there is in kind of the petunias. And you benefit from that extreme flower coverage, beautiful mounding and trailing habit. And none of these are super tunias. None of these are waves. They're all just in that new kind of lineup of self-cleaning petunias that are very, very vigorous. And they all kind of reach different sizes, but you can see even like the Amore Pink Princess, that series is a little more compact than some of the other ones. Still perfect for baskets and containers. This is one that we planted up for the driveway and we just put in individual plants in here. So these are all one-offs, but you can see we picked very vigorous varieties and they just took off. So we have that Calibrachoa right in front, the Petunia towards the back, that Coleus is looking beautiful, the Dahlia, that Venti Mango Dahlia just did not stop all summer long. It was just a bloom machine. And we have a canna in there as well. There is some red rooster grass up there. That stood out more earlier in the season, but once the other plants kind of came in, it just kind of looked like, you know, a little bit of decoration coming out of them. And then there was some, uh, some sweet potato vine. Now the yellow flowers that you see in the background, those are a Helianthus that were in a different pot behind. But this became such a wow planter. And this kind of shows you too, like you don't have to be really formal with it. These were just a bunch of them tucked in. The only thing we paid attention to is that we had the taller plants in the middle and the kind of shorter or trailing plants on the outside. I really like this combination. It's a little overpacked, but I think it was a planter that just looked different each time you came by. Uh, you've got the canna kind of anchoring it there, the sweet potato vine and the lantana pouring out the front, really looks great. And then those dragonweed begonias were kind of filling out the middle. Beautiful, and it looks like they also had some evergreens tucked in there. There might be other plants in there too. I just, you know, I'm not able to kind of see exactly what everything is that's in there, but I can tell this planter probably looked great right from spring right through frost. I'm going to guess that the orange flowers were the first thing you saw when you looked at this, and that's because of the foliage of these plants. So that canna has a bronze leaf, really nice and dark. The impatience have a nice dark, dark green. The begonia that's in there, super dark leaf as well. In fact, that one's a selenia chocolate orange begonia. Usually if you see something like chocolate or maca in the name, it means that that begonia has a dark leaf in there. And then that Burgundy Wedding Train Coleus has both that dark center and then that lime outside, and that lime really shows off against the Creeping Jenny down at the bottom. I picked this one because their plant choices solved a problem for them. So this was facing north, and the plants kind of in that background of there were getting full blazing sun all the time. Meanwhile, the things closer to us were kind of under an awning and didn't get very much sun. So they needed plants that could do either or. So these impatience and the sweet potato vine, wax begonia, excellent choices for locations where you have, you know, shady parts of it and you have sunny parts of it. Another great plant for this kind of situation would be the sunshade coleuses that are out there. This one from my sister's deck is a hummingbird's favorite. So that vermilion arcufia is a plant that the hummingbirds will come to day after day, as well as the calibrachoa. That one is the caltastic mango. And then there's some lantana in there as well. And that bandalista series is so nice because it grows up and over the containers. Really enjoy that one. 
These are here because you don't often see grasses put in hanging baskets. I think it just looked fantastic. They were blowing in the wind. They just look very elegant up there. They, they looked like they belonged. And I had never really seen people put a large kind of fountain grass like that up in a hanging basket. And you can see the sweet potato vines doing great. Looks like they kind of missed a little watering and their petunias are suffering, but they are bouncing back. And then down at the bottom there is that beautiful canna growing as well. This store was very specific in the plants that they chose. And I, so they put that black petunia next to that dusty miller. Then they have the purple in there as well. It's really fun and it really goes with the theme of the store, which was a monster and ghoul type shop. They weren't open when I was there, so I don't know what was inside, but their plant displays definitely got my attention. My photo of this one does not do it justice. It was such a stunning combination. I love that verbena because it gets that two-tone, almost looks like it's kind of glowing. And that's the caramel calabarcoa, which I'm kind of kicking myself that we didn't order that one, but maybe we still could add it, but we don't have room. Uh, I got to think about that one because that was a, that was really beautiful. And this combination was just so gorgeous. The Brazilian Red Hot Alternantira, that's a foliage plant looks really great because it gets really nice red color. And then the Funhouse Papaya Petunia has very similar color to the Supertunia Persimmon and the uh, Flower Showers Mayan Sunset. Really great kind of new petunia color there. These planters are so impressive and you can see that they are kind of water troughs for animals that they transformed into flower beds. What a great idea. They were able to put really large plants in there, so you have that salvia. Um, the salvia that we have that's similar to that would be the rock and play in the blues. They have those gorgeous dahlias. And then the petunias are all, I think, super tunias. They have some plectranthus. I think that that yellow flower, I think it's a San Vitalia, but it could be a zinnia. I, I didn't get that close to it, but this is just such an impressive display. This is one of ours, and that white flower you see in there is a black-eyed Susan vine. And normally you picture black-eyed Susan vines climbing up a trellis or going along a fence or a gate or something like that. But we wanted this one to cover our pot because that was in a 32-inch pot. So we wanted to just cover the gray pot, and boy, it really delivered. We had it with the Supertunia Mini Vista yellow. You can see that also helped cover the pot. And then we had some sweet potato vine in there. We had some Superbina Peachy Keen, and we had a Coleus in there. The only thing that ended up happening is that this black-eyed Susan vine is so vigorous that it kind of overtook the Super Junior Mini Vista, so it got a little crazy. But this one still looked great even, even at that point. I found this one online. I love this combination with the canna, that angelonia, the coleus. That's, I think, a Super Junior Jazzberry Petunia. And they got the sweet potato vine. Repeat that angelonia down at the bottom and the creeping jenny. But one of the things that I want to point out is that they also have that echinacea or coneflower down at the bottom. Now, I don't know if they had it in a container, if that's just growing in the flower bed. That brings me to the point that you can put perennials into your containers. Uh, you can try to overwinter them or you can take them out later and transplant them in your yard in different spots. And they can be fantastic because number one, they tend to use less water. They definitely don't need as much fertilizer as annuals do. And they can be just easier to take care of. And there's a couple plants that are really, really good for appearing in there, especially hookahs and hostas. Those two just do fantastic and they can handle quite a bit of shade, but a lot of them, like especially the hookahs, there's a lot of sun varieties. So I wanna point out some of the planters that also incorporated some of those perennials. So like this one here, lots of plants in here. So starting from the bottom right, there is that sweet potato vine, look at that beautiful bronze color, that petunia, probably a bee's knees petunia, the coleus, probably the albrito from Color Blaze. But then, uh, and there's verbena over on the other side, that's the purple one is a different type of verbena. And then you look at the agastache or agastache or ag you know, there's a million different ways that people pronounce it. That's kind of the joke in the gardening world that no one knows how to pronounce that properly. Uh, anyway, that can be a perennial in a lot of areas. So just an interesting choice. At least that's what I think that plant is. I'm pretty sure that was the new one from Proven Winners. And then they also have that nifofia. That's that uh, red hot poker plant. That can be, I think, a zone six or seven perennial, depending on the variety. And then they have some ornamental grasses in there as well but they are mixing perennials and annuals in these containers and it's absolutely beautiful. This is one of, I think, six or eight containers that we planted up. They did so well for us this year. I did a video update on that, so I would recommend watching that one because it does show you what those planters look like. A lot of them bloomed right through to the end of the season, so we absolutely loved it. So I'm hoping I gave you a little bit of inspiration. I hope this wasn't too overwhelming because there's lots of information, lots of plants in here, but it, it just is nice to be able to see some samples. And that's why I like to show you snapshots too, because a lot of times the photos that like Proven Winners provides or some of the other plant companies, they're just so perfect 
and they're kind of so processed and so adjusted that they're not actually how they're going to grow in your yard. So seeing exactly how they looked someplace else, I think does help a lot. Now remember too, that these containers will change over the season. So a lot of them, I had taken the photos in like late July or August. Some of them were as late as September. And then I had a couple of them like that were more May. So they do change over time, but at least you get a kind of snapshot of what they look like at the moment when I was there. Uh, so, hey, I hope you guys have some good ideas uh, and you're getting more ideas. Go ahead and tell me more about what you're going to be planting and maybe any plants that you're going to be trying in combination, because I would like to hear uh, and get some ideas off of you guys of what you are planning to grow and what you're excited about this year.